As details of the Ontario government's plans for overhauling the education system come into view, not everyone is applauding the changes. Joining us now, Marit Stiles, the NDP member for Davenport and the official opposition critic for education, and Mitzi Hunter, former Minister of Education and the Liberal MPP for Scarborough Guildwood. And on this first day, back to school, we welcome you two here into our studio. Great to be here. Nice it's to great. see you both again. Great to be here. Let's start with the math. 200 million bucks uh, sounds like a lot of money to spend on trying to revamp how they're doing math in the province. What do we think of the strategy? Uh, this is not new money. Uh, this is money that was announced previously. This is uh, money that's going into areas that I think even the previous government, and I think Mitzi will probably mention that, uh, had already put money into. And at the end of the day, um, my response to that is, if you really want to deal with the issue of math and math scores, you need to do the things that we know actually work, like make sure that we have more one-on-one -on -one time, uh, between teachers and students, and that we provide the kind of professional support that teachers are asking for. What are the chances of those things happening? Well, I think at this point, given that this government is actually cutting uh, teachers in classrooms and other education workers that provide support to students in our schools, uh, it's not looking good. And I keep waiting, hoping that maybe one of these announcements that the government is throwing around uh, to do some damage control, in my opinion, might actually result in some real change and some backtracking on uh, their very significant cuts to education. It's e. Hunter. Well, I had the privilege of making the announcement of the renewed math strategy, which focused on more supports for elementary schools, having math coaches and math leads in those schools, because we had to do something about the decline in math scores. And what I was looking for is how are you going to improve on that? Not just re-announce the same thing, but actually make a difference for students in the classroom. We know this is about 21st century learning. We know that we have to prepare students for the world in which they will confront, and math is a core part of that. Do you see this as a, as a kind of personal repudiation of what you tried to do when you were the minister? Well, I know that, um, you know, there's a worldwide decline in mass scores. If you look at the OECD, you can see that. And Ontario needed to focus on how we support students in the classroom. And we have to focus on the right things. It's not about back to basics in math. It's actually about how do we boost critical thinking and problem solving, which are the skills that students need for today. Parenthetically, I should just say that we usually include the Green Party of Ontario in our discussions when we do this kind of thing. But Mike Schreiner, the leader, is actually off shooting another show for TVO at the moment, Political Blind Date. So he's off somewhere with someone else. Having fun. Having fun. Well, yeah. as are we. Uh, but anyway, that's why the Greens are not here today. Uh, discovery math. Discovery math has taken a beating lately uh, from a lot of people who think it is the root cause of why the test scores are going down. I see you're shaking your head well, already. I, I think that discovery math is a term that's been, it's really become like a political term. And, and, and really, it, I, don't, I don't even know what that means. And I think most educators I speak to say, that's not what we talk about at all. What we talk about is inquiry-based learning. And um, one of the things that we know coming out of this latest round of EQIO tests, uh, whatever you think of that, because there are limitations as well, I think, to that kind of testing. Uh, but what we know is that the fundamentals, actually, in math, our students are doing pretty well at. It's the it's how that's applied. And, and I think the problem-solving piece of that, which is what inquiry-based learning is supposed to get us to, is where we're finding that we're actually having some shortcomings. So what really bothers me is that when I hear the Minister of Education talk about, or Doug Ford talk about discovery math and the demon of discovery math, I, mean, I think that they're just playing politics, uh, really, with the issue. I, what I would like to see is actually them talk about what we really know from the results of those tests and what we can actually be doing better. You would know as a, future, as a former education minister that yeah. there is a lot of support out there among parents for a so-called back-to-basics approach in many things, including math. Well, I think parents want to make sure that their child is ready for the future. And that's what school is supposed to be. This is an exciting day, by the way. So all the students are now back to school. It's exciting. When I was the Minister of Education, I loved going into schools. I made a point of doing it once a week. And those kindergarten classes are really where you see that inquiry-based learning at its best, because there's no limit to the learning. It's about the, the questions that students ask and how it relates to their world and you apply this learning techniques to build on that and and so really you know sort of dumbing down and going back to rote learning is not what we need in Ontario we actually need to open up learning and make sure that students know how to 
apply that critical thinking, how to do problem solving. Yeah. And we're not comparing Ontario students against Ontario students. Our students are compared against all of the provinces and really the rest of the world. Not to sound like too much of an old fogey here, though, uh, you know, it's 50 plus years ago that I learned that seven sixes are 42, and I still know that today. Right. So, uh, you, you really want to hammer back yeah. to basics? I, I, I mean, I hear you, and I think as a parent myself, my, my, both of my daughters struggled in math in the early days, and I, and I personally felt I was very confused by the way that the curriculum was laid out. I didn't understand as a parent um, how, how I could help them even. And so, I, again, I want to go back, though, to what is the best support we can provide for students? It's about having the teacher time in the classroom and the one-on-one -on -one time with students. And if we're going to increase the size of classes, if we're going to take away the additional supports, you know, while we're talking about putting math coaches in the, in, in the, in, in the boards, we are also cutting a lot of those support positions uh, that actually help, uh, help develop the capacity of math teachers and teachers to teach math. So I don't, you know, I feel the pain that a lot of parents feel uh, around that issue. I absolutely Absolutely do, but I also think that we are in a new day here, right? We are talking about 21st century learning, and the, the minister likes to talk a lot about, you know, getting people ready for the jobs of the, new, the next century. Well, I, we have to also step back. I am not an expert in math. I admit to that. I am. I don't want the government coming to me and asking me how should we teach kids better math. I want them to go to the people who actually know about math and how to best teach it. Do you, do you, as you sit back and think about this, though? Revisit your time as Minister of Education, Mitzi, and think to yourself, you know, had I been able to get X, Y, and Z through, and we understand that you're part of a team and that even though you're the minister, you don't get to do anything you want whenever you want. Is there something you wish you'd done when you were still there that might make things a little less worse today? And as we relate to math, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I wanted to look at was, you know, for elementary school, do we need math? experts teaching math in elementary school What's so subject experts and and that's something we have to use the evidence and uh, you know getting all the teachers to write a math test is not evidence based you're opposed to that well it's not evident where's the evidence so the evidence that we've seen so far shows that it doesn't make a difference in terms of classroom learning for students which is the problem here that we're trying to solve the minister says it's all part of your intellectual baggage that a teacher needs to have packed before he or she goes into a classroom. Does that argument hold any water for you? I don't see the evidence. Show the homework so that we can see what this is based on. Because at the end of the day, you know, when I was Minister of Education, my single focus was on the students. How do we improve outcomes for students? And every decision had to be made based on that. Testing teachers in math skills. Yes, no? Well, I mean, the EQAO themselves <laughs> came out with some research last week saying actually there's no research that shows that this uh, links back to student performance in math. So I think we do have to, um, we have to question whether or not this is the right road and the right step to take. Um, you know, what bothers me about the math test actually is I think this was a real knee-jerk political move uh, by the Ford government. Um, to what end? Well, I think that they're trying to appeal to people and their instinct is, well, if we throw a test in there, that'll instantly create better teachers for our schools. Look, first of all, let me point out again, those new teachers who are graduating now with that new test, there will be no jobs for them. In this in this new Ford Ontario education system, so I don't know I don't know how that's going to help anyone. Um, but also at the end of the day, you know they are tested and they are assessed. And what we know is that the teachers who particularly are going into teaching math in high school um, come in with very specific qualifications. So we need to think about yes, how do we support those teachers? How do we improve the education of those teachers? But ultimately, I don't think that this test is about actually accomplishing that. I think this test was a, a political move by this government uh, to generate a little bit of sympathy uh, in the face of some, I think, uh, really negative response they were getting from the public about their education cuts. What are, what are the results? I think that's what we have to look at. The results of what? The results of this action in terms of like, it's not based on evidence. As you're saying, EQAO themselves are saying, you know, we have nothing to back this up. A lot of support Yet, on talk radio for it. A lot of support on talk radio, but is that gonna help students in the classroom? Did you consider doing this when you were Minister of Education? 
no, this is not what we were focused on. You know, I'm proud of the record that we have on education in this province. When you look at the graduation rates, 68% when the Liberals took over, investing in making education a priority rose that graduation rate by 18%. I was Minister of Education when we announced that it was at 86.5%. And it's something that I'm going to continue to focus on because I believe that that's the number one priority is investing in the skills and in the talents of our young people is really going to set up our province for a better future. Okay, next issue, class sizes. Let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the previous Minister of Education, when she was in one of those chairs, came here and said, we are moving to bigger class sizes and it's a, you know, it's a fait accompli, it's going to happen. She no longer has the job. The new minister has come in and not only has he said, we've listened to the public and we appreciate the fact that we can't go to vastly larger class sizes right away, but I'm also prepared, he said earlier in this program tonight, I'm prepared to make this a subject at the bargaining table that I will talk to the unions about and, and we can discuss it there. Again, you're smiling already, but what's what's wrong with all that? Well, I, I mean, it, uh, first of all, I, I'm glad that the Minister of Education went back to school on bargaining 101, okay? Because there are collective agreements that have class cap sizes in those agreements. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this government didn't woke up one day and realized this, that they couldn't just impose these things on all of the school boards unilaterally, or that this might create chaos and confusion. Well, I, I, I mean, we wasted a lot of time. Uh, so that's the first thing. Secondly, this is about class size averages. And I really, to this day, don't think this Minister of Education has completely owned up to what the impact's going to be on classrooms. And the idea that it's gonna be somehow more slowly rolled out, that's also misleading. School boards across the province are saying, look, we, we have to move in a certain direction. You're basing this on retirements and attrition. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, actually we are already, if we get to 24 this year, uh, we have to go to 28 in, in by your end of year four. The point is, whether you do it slowly or fast, we're still ending up in the same place. And we are going to have students in schools this year in classes that are more like 30. And the most important piece is we're losing course options. So high school students will not have the opportunities that students had even last year. What's your take on The it? damage is done. You know, our education system is a big system. We have over 2 million students in the system. And in fact, that enrollment is creeping up not down. So if you're putting more pressure on boards, <clears throat> giving them less money per student and expecting them to solve it, you know, you don't announce a week before the school year starts that you're backing away from class sizes and putting that at the negotiating table. It's a tactic that creates chaos in our system that we don't need. We need to focus on how do we get the results of improving our education system, not sending them into chaos I, just because you're at, at a bargaining table. I hear what you're both saying, but uh, okay, so there is that. But then on the other hand, this group got elected in part to rein spending in, to reduce the deficit, to eventually balance the budget. And we know that one of the largest light items in every budget is teacher salaries. If you're gonna cut spending, you gotta go where the money is. This is where the money is. So can you blame them for going there? <laughs> well, you know, I, I hope and I trust that all the parties are going to the bargaining table in good faith. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we've seen lots of labor unrest under the previous government. Uh, so they're not the only ones who are going to face these difficult decisions. But I, I would really prefer if the government was just upfront and honest, actually, about what they're trying to achieve here. If they want to just slash education and find a lot of savings in education, then come up, like, come be, be forthright about that. Because right now I feel like it's a, a lot of... Uh, smoke and mirrors. At the end of the day, um, our education system has been um, under a lot of strain for many years. No other government has had the courage to make the decisions that need to be made in terms of how we fund public education. This government is choosing to use our students, again, as political pawns and the bargaining that they're doing with this with, uh, over the next few months. And I just find that's shameful. Well, let, let me just make sure I understand. What is the courageous decision that, that you think needs to be made that neither her mm -hmm. party nor the Tories yeah. have made? Oh, wow. I mean, we know what needs to be done, right? The funding formula is, is deeply flawed in our system. And so what has happened is when the previous government failed to address those, those fundamental issues in the funding formula, they instead kind of threw patchwork quilt of little band-aids over issues. And in fact, I think at the end of the day, it kind of undermines the whole system and it left the system open to the kinds of cuts that we're seeing now that this government is bringing in. So 
I want to see, I actually want to see a funding formula that's revamped, that's changed completely, that actually puts the focus back on student needs, um, which is where the current funding formula goes deeply wrong. You want to respond to that? Uh, well, I, I mean, I don't agree with that because we increased the funding exponentially in terms of education. And, uh, and that led to an 18% increase in the graduation rates. It led to groundbreaking changes in things like full day kindergarten that now is part of our education system that parents and students themselves are looking forward to each and every year. So does that mean that the system doesn't need to continuously improve? Of course it does. There are many aspects that need to improve. And the funding formula is something that is reviewed on an annual basis where you're looking at what aspects of this very large and complex system do we need to change do we need to improve we need to make investments for instance in special education so that students uh, who are some of our most vulnerable students have the supports that they need in school um, so so I, I would say that under the liberals we saw a, an, an exponential increase in the outcomes for education but do we have more to do? Absolutely. I just actually recently announced a goal of a 90% graduation rate. We should be setting our aspirations much higher in education and supporting students so that all students succeed. So there's a, <clears throat> there's a fundamental problem in a system where you have um, a government that's continuing to sort of throw pockets of money at issues that are systemic mm -hmm. in a system. We need to delve down and have the guts to do the to, to deal with that problem again. It's not just about creating all kinds of spe special pots of money and and lots of opportunities for politicians to make flashy announcements. That's really easy for next the next government to undo. We need to deal with those fundamental issues. And another issue that this government is also feeling, you know, astoundingly at is we have a 16 billion dollar capital repair backlog uh, that nobody is really talking about right now. And why? It's because governments have not had the guts to say to developers, for example, yeah, you want to build big condo towers in some of our communities? We need you to contribute um, across the board, across the province, in helping us to repair and build new schools. Okay, let's, in our remaining moments here, put one more issue on the table, and that is the sex ed curriculum. Uh, the Tories say they have done a massive and significant consultation, far bigger than anything your government had done in the past, they say. And as a result, they have brought something forward that they think is better. What do you say? Well, I, I would say <laughs> what's changed? You know, there was a little tweaking here and there, but fundamentally it's the same curriculum that was in place for three years that they actually rolled back 20 years. So the students last year really had a disservice. It created a lot of chaos in our schools. And uh, in fact, 140,000 high school students walked out because they objected to the fact that they were not getting the best education possible as in terms of sex ed. So what has really changed? You know, this was, well, this was a political promise that uh, Premier Ford made and wanted to keep, but he did that at the expense of the learning of our students, and I just think that's wrong. Your former leader and premier accused them of basically lying about all of the problems around the sex ed curriculum for the purposes of, of sort of torquing it as a political issue. Um, you know, I mentioned this to the minister. I haven't heard Kathleen Wynne use the word lying as often as she did in that news conference. Uh, you got any c concerns about the use of that language around this, or is that an appropriate thing to say? You know, I, I haven't seen that specific interview, but what I do know is that, and when you talk to students themselves, they were used as a political pawn in this instance, and it was to their disservice. You know, the health and physical education curriculum, including the sex ed portion, is about students learning their development and, frankly, their safety. And that should never have been put at risk. Well, to that end, Mar, let me get... Uh, they've added a section on vaping. They've added something on cannabis. They've added something on concussions. Mm -hmm. They would say these are new and better things that were worth the consultation. Your view. Well, I, I, I don't disagree with Mitzi in that I think that we had a wasted year, a lost year, um, in a really important area of our children's education. And, uh, and that's unforgivable, uh, especially when it was done uh, simply uh, for political purposes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, absolutely. They did add a few things in that are useful. Um, they did some things that I think are not helpful, like delaying the conversation about gender identity. But um, 
what I really learned from this experience, and it really, it really brought it home for me, is we got to take the politics again out of uh, conversations like this about curriculum. Right? We need to leave this to the folks who understand um, how we teach, the experts in teaching these subjects, and, and we need to ensure that they're reviewed very regularly, um, again, outside of that kind of political influence. Because truthfully, yes, vaping should be part of the curriculum. Absolutely, really important. Concussions. Right on. Um, I think that still could have happened without rolling, uh, without it, back rolling it back years. For, a, for a whole year. And I, and, but I want to say too, like reflect back not that many years when it was re, it was introduced under Dalton McGuinty and then pulled back again, right? So we've seen this happen so many times. Let's stop this. This is our children's education. This is about their health and their physical well-being. And we can't afford to let government after government continue to play these games. I think yeah. I, I just also want to say that I got 10 we need to be honest mm -hmm. as well, because parents always have the right to take their child out mm -hmm. if they feel that there's a reason to do that. So that's not new, even though it's being sold as if it is. Gotcha. Those are the views of the two opposition critics, Marit Stiles, Mitzi Hunter. We're grateful to both of you for coming Thank into you. TVO tonight. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. for having us, Steve. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.